The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. We have a very touching scene in today's gospel. A scene between a mother and her son. But it is not just any kind of mother. It is none other than our Blessed Virgin Mary. And it's not just any kind of son. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. But even if they are at that status, even if they are all holy and worthy of our honor and glory, their experiences are pretty much the same with any experiences of a mother and son. It's easy to relate to them. It makes me recall my own mother, as she would tell me whenever I am sick, kung pwede ko lang kunin yung sakit mo, kinuha ko na. Kasi sa tuwing nakikita kitang nasasaktan, nasasaktan din ako. Probably that is also the feeling of our Blessed Mother when she saw our Lord hanging on the cross. If she could be the one to suffer such difficulties and not her son, It also makes me recall how my mother will take care of me when I am sick. Gigising siya ng madaling araw, kapag ka narinig akong umuubo, kukuha ng kulay green na ointment, ipapahid sa aking dibdib at likuran. Pagkatapos nun, luluwag ang aking panghinga. Hindi ko malaman kung saan nanggagaling ang kagalingan, doon ba sa ipinahid niyang ointment, o dun sa kanyang haplos ng pagmamahal. That is how bonded a mother and son is to each other. Imagine the mother carried in her womb her son, her child, for nine months. At nung, nung niluwal dito sa mundo, halos ikamatay na niya. A strong bond between mother and son. And we can see that vividly in today's gospel. Probably no words could express their bonding. Siguro sa tingin pa lang nagkakaintindihan na sila. So united in mind and heart. But you see, it didn't happen instantly. 
the unity of mind and heart of our Blessed Mother and our Lord Jesus Christ did not happen instantly. We can see that clearly in today's Gospel. But a few mysteries before, especially on the fifth joyful mystery, we could see that they are of different mind. As our Lord got lost and was found in the temple, and our Blessed Mother was asking our Lord, why did you do this to us? And our Blessed Lord will tell her, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I should be at my father's house? And several mysteries after, on the second luminous mystery, the wedding at Cana, their mind haven't really united yet. As our mother would ask our Lord to perform a miracle for the couple who just got married. And Jesus telling her, it is not yet my time. But you see, in that differences in mind, each of them participated in one another's mind. As when Jesus got lost in the temple, after expressing his mind to his mother, it was said, he went down with them in Nazareth and was obedient to them. And as our Blessed Mother would tell our Lord, it is now time to perform a miracle, for the couple is in dire need. And our Lord would simply keep quiet and perform a miracle. Those are some of the struggles that our Blessed Mother and our Blessed Lord went through before they had unity of mind and heart. And finally, being one of mind and heart, still, though this is a very touching scene, it is very heartbreaking. Imagine a mother seeing her son slowly dying in front of her, and the son seeing his mother and asking himself who will take care of her. That is probably why he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Referring to John, inihabilin ang ina kay Juan, isa sa kanyang mga apostoles. It makes me recall my encounter with a middle-aged mother who also lost her mother because of COVID. The last time she saw her was online, struggling for her life. She could not recover from that sight. And no matter how much she would like to share her hurts with her children, she would not like to do it because she would not like to burden her children of her hurts. Probably what our Blessed Mother also felt, seeing our Lord having tremendous difficulties as He was hanging on the cross, she would not like to add to that. And our Lord, understanding the struggle of, her mo of his mother would also feel her difficulty as, she, as he would entrust her to John. It makes me recall my encounter with an old woman. At her advanced stage, she was still struggling with the question, have I really loved my mother? Have I really taken care of her? because she was the one who took care of her mother until she died. And here now, 
our Lord and trusting our Blessed Mother to John. John probably was also asking if he is worthy. John also, along the way, was also asking himself the question, was I able to take care of my Blessed Lord's Mother? John may not have died in the way St. Peter and St. Paul died. He might not be a great, such a great person as Peter and Paul, but he represents all of us. Our daily struggles of taking care not just of our mothers, but of one another. Our daily struggles and difficulties in life, in trying to be holy, just like our Blessed Mother and our Blessed Lord. John represents each of us in our journey towards holiness, in our way of participating with one another's difficulties, trying to empathize with those who suffer, and yet trying also to be of one mind and heart with them as we travel this road called life. Perhaps the best analogy to that is what we will be doing a few days from now as we once again have the grand procession. You see, procession is a very obvious manifestation of our journey, journey through life, journey through life together with our Lord, together with our Blessed Mother, walking together, united in one direction, one goal, one mission, which is the salvation of all. All meaning not just our fellow Catholics and Christians, all meaning not just our own religion, culture, and nationality, or even gender. Rather, all of mankind, and it could even extend to all creation. That is the mission of our Lord, which He entrusts to us, which He also entrusts to our Blessed Mother. And as we would make that grand procession a few days from now, it calls to mind my experience before with my mother. Nung nakakasali pa siya sa prosesyon, nung malakas pa yung tuhod niya. But at the middle of the procession, she, her knees will start shaking already and she would stop but then she would glimpse at our Blessed Mother and tell me, ang ganda niya, anak, no? And then afterwards, become energized once again to proceed with the procession. That is how our Blessed Mother inspired her. And I think it is also a good way for us to be inspired in spite of the many difficulties that we experience in life. When we recall the many processions that we have joined in the procession of our Blessed Mother's image, La Naval de Manila, we may get tired, but each time we get a glimpse of her image, it inspires us. And that procession itself is something also that we look back to, especially in difficult moments in our struggles in life and something that we could also look forward to every year as we join that grand procession of the image of our Blessed Mother, making her our inspiration in life. Actually, when our Lord entrusted our Blessed Mother to John, John probably thought that he would be taking care of our Blessed Mother. But later on, probably, most probably, he realized that it was my, our Blessed Mother who is taking care of him, our Blessed Mother who is helping him realize 
how good God is. Our Blessed Mother is the one inspiring Him. In the same way, as we honor our Blessed Mother, that honor goes back to us. The graces goes back to us. It inspires us to travel though it's difficult to walk and yet hand in hand and yet in one mission we are able to do it as long as we get a glimpse of the holiness of our Blessed Mother. There is that one scene in the movie The Passion of Christ in which our Lord was carrying his cross and falling several times but our Blessed Mother is running and doing her best to meet our Lord face to face so much so that even if our Lord will fall on his cross each time our Lord sees our Mother he is able to rise up again and go on with the journey I think that is how we are to be inspired of our Blessed Mother as we journey through life. And probably the words of our Blessed Mother to our Lord and our Lord to our Blessed Mother are the same words that they, both of them, would like to whisper to us. Go on with the journey because you are all God's children and you are all on the way to holiness and eternal life. Just learn to walk together, hand in hand, waiting for one another, never wanting to go ahead of the other, but rather to walk together in unity as we all together fulfill our mission of getting closer to God and closer to one another, just like the unity between Mary and our Lord.